You may hear some funny noises because I gave Max a Kong and he's going at it. So everything is safe and sound here. Um, okay. So, welcome. I know this is just kind of a random time that I don't normally do. This morning was just a little tiring for me and I needed a nap. But I'm coming to you today with a super special treat. We're going to make a vegan hot chocolate and we're going to make it in the slow cooker. It's easy enough to make in the stove. So if you don't have a slow cooker, you can make it on the stove. You could even make it in your Instant Pot. But what I like about making it in the slow cooker is that you can put it together right before dinner have it cooking on high and then when you're done with dinner and you're ready to watch your TV or your movie, have a little popcorn and hot chocolate, you just dip it right out. So it's easy. And if you are here, I'm not, don't know if I'm seeing comments today. So if anybody is there, if you will say something, that would be lovely. And if not, I may be able to make this happen. It happened yesterday. Oh, it looks like me. Okay. Oh, yep. It's happening at the same time. Yay. Hello, Debbie. Thank you for checking in so I know that things are working. Hello, Cheryl and Monique and Sophie. Yay. Oh, all kinds of people. And Barbara. Okay, let me turn some of this down. And Janine. Wow, you guys are just popping on in here. Okay. So, what we're doing today is we're gonna make a vegan slow cooker hot chocolate. It's so ridiculously easy. It's so much better than the packets and there's lots of different things you can do. So of course, I am the queen of options, so we're gonna talk about options. But first, let me show you how easy it is. I'm using, a, this is a one and a half and this is a two quart slow cooker. So I'm using a small one. You can use a larger one if you have a large family or you want to just make a lot, because you could even make a whole bunch, keep it in the fridge and warm it up as you want it to. And this recipe is from Vegan Slow Cooker for Two, the base recipe, you can kind of see the picture there, but you can also get it um, on healthyslowcooking.com. So we're gonna put about, I'm doing half and half. So in general, this is gonna make one batch. So I'm gonna put one and a half cups of soy milk you could use almond milk, you could use oat milk, you could use any kind of hemp milk, anything you want. Typically, I'm going with unsweetened and adding my sweetener. You could also, honestly, heat up some like chocolate almond milk, put what sweetener you want in it, maybe even a little extra chocolate. So whatever you have on hand, you can make this as long as you have chocolate. Hey, Linda. It's wonderful to see all of you guys here. So I've poured the milk in. I've got half of a, a sixth of a cup of sugar because I'm doing this um, a, in half. So I'm doing a half recipe. And you could use for your sweetener. So I'm using a vegan um, sugar. I think it's Wholesome is the brand. You could use coconut sugar. You could use date sugar. You could use brown sugar. You could use date syrup, maple syrup, um, agave nectar. Sweeteners, I don't even know what they are. You could use. So what you would do is kind of use them to taste. So I'm using an unsweetened chocolate and I'll let you see this up here a little bit more. And so these are just unsweetened chocolate and usually they're in these little pieces. Hi, and I don't see your name, the person who just said that on from Facebook, but hello. Um, I think you must be coming from one of the groups and it's not showing me those names. So what you do is usually, hey, Jack, Jackie says her chocolate is her favorite flavor. So usually I'll pull out my little scale and I'll measure out two ounces. But once you do this, the ones that are in little blocks like this are the ones in Trader Joe's that look like little discs they actually weigh the same. So once you know the weight of them, you never have to weigh them again. You, if you had a bar of chocolate, you would want to cut them up <clears throat> to where they're at least this small. And there's something lovely, like I don't know if you've ever cut bar chocolate, but the sensation of cutting it, it just, it's very sensory 
pleasing to me. <laughs> so um, you could also do that if you want to have the chocolate melt a little bit sooner, but we're just going to drop these guys right on in there. <laughs> like seriously, could it be any easier? Oh, hey, Scott, I'm glad you like my overhead camera. I like it too. Um, oh, and it's, it's Diane Jacobs who's in the fa Facebook group. Welcome, we are happy to have you here. So again, I'm doing half a recipe of a vegan slow cooker hot chocolate. So the regular recipe, and I just did that so I can show you kind of a almost finished result, if not a finished result. We're doing three cups of unsweetened non-dairy milk is the recipe with about two ounces of unsweetened chocolate. And, um, what you know we can do <laughs> we can do different sugars again we could do i'm using a vegan white sugar you could use um, brown sugar date sugar maple syrup agave nectar date syrup seriously you could also just put whole dates in here if you want to do this whole food plant-based so what would happen is as it's getting warm in there it will soften the dates and then you could puree the whole thing in the blender and strain out any of the fibrous parts of the dates. So you could have a completely whole food, um, plant-based hot chocolate. Now, if you don't do chocolate, which I know some of the whole food people do not because of the caffeine, you could use carob to do something really similar as well. So the, that's the base recipe. A third a cup of sugar, three cups of milk. Um, I'm using soy milk for mine. You could use almond milk, hemp milk, oat milk, any kind of the milks. Oh my I don't know if you guys can hear that, but he's got the, he's got it caught up against something. So if you're hearing like little gongs and chimes, just imagine happy times. <laughs> um, and Marilyn is here. Yay, Marilyn. So I also wanted to talk to you about some more options because that was not enough options to talk about. And um, these little chocolate discs you can get just about anywhere. But like I said, you can get them at Trader Joe's usually at this time of the year too. Now, Cheryl likes her hot chocolate pristine. I, I like stuff in my chocolate. So, um, oh, hey, Sandy, how are you? It's so awesome that you are, um, you're happening here. I can't remember if we were visiting you when we got the little snowflake slow cooker in JCPenney several years ago. So what we're doing again is we're making hot chocolate in our slow cooker because I'm lazy, but you can do it because you're smart. So you're gonna put about three cups of unsweetened non-dairy milk in, about a third of a cup of sugar. You can use any kind of sweetener you want really to taste. If you were using maple syrup, I would not go up to the whole third. I probably would start with a quarter cup. So know if you're changing this up, you wanna start a little bit less, add some more and see how it fits in because maple syrup and some other flavors can really overpower it too. Um, oh yay, Melissa Langford loves Trader Joe's and I love you because you're so awesome. And Jackie likes Amaretta and her hot chocolate. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to the adult portion of our show, <laughs> which is just about the liqueurs you can put in hot chocolate. That's as exciting as I get. Um, and hey, Susan, it's so awesome to see you. So again, for all of you guys kind of just tuning in, um, in the slow cooker, the recipe is three cups unsweetened non-dairy milk, two ounces of unsweetened chocolate. Usually you can find them in little discs or little mini bars. But if yours is in a big giant baking bar, break off the piece you need and just slice it with a knife. Because that I guess before ASMR was a thing, that's my aim. I just like the feel of it going through the chocolate and the sound. It just, I don't know, it's just very soothing. So, um, oh, I have not. Sophia says, have I tried, is it Eric Aroma? A-R-R-A-C. I do not know what that is, but I want to know. So I made, a, I split this batch in half and I started one about an hour ago, a little under so we can see the, the results. Because what we would do after we do this, we turn it to high if we want it to cook in about, or to be ready in about an hour and a half. You could do it on low, so you can make it at lunch, so you could have it go on for dinner too. Also, if you use the granulated sugar, the cool thing about using that <laughs> is that it gets thicker and thicker. 
And so it's almost more of a liquid truffle than it is a hot chocolate. And in Asheville, there's a place called the Chocolate Lounge, and they make chocolate truffles, which like liquid chocolate truffles, which is just kind of like super decadent. So in Cheryl's batch, I put some vanilla, which used to be plain old vanilla, and now it's like super expensive vanilla, right? So if you want to add a little bit of that, it adds a little extra oomph. And you can tell this is, this is from one of my last sales like four or five years ago. I got vanilla on sale for $3. This thing would be worth like $30 now, now that there's the vanilla shortage. But we could also do some other normal flavors, I will say, like we could put peppermint extract in there. And I would probably just start with a few drops, taste it, see if that's enough for you. Because some people feel very strongly about not having things taste too pepperminty. Other people feel very strongly about having peppermint taste where peppermint is described and sold to you. Um, okay, and Sophie says, really, uh, it's called Eric Aroma in English. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, because I'm super curious if it's just if it's something else that translates in you know American English or something. Orange is another killer flavor with chocolate. Cheryl hates it. Cheryl hates hates it, and I love love it. And so that is why there are two slow cookers of hot chocolate going on right now. I haven't decided, but I'm I'm thinking of going orange. Now, I want to show you a couple of other things that you might think are a little bit odd. So if you are team floral flavors, just take, stay along with me. If you're not, take a deep breath. This will be over soon. I've got some lavender extract, because to me, lavender and chocolate is just a delicious combination. Now, when you're doing something like with lavender or rose water, and so these are both rose water, there are a couple of things. If you get rose water, you want to, and actually if you, you can buy rose petals and you can buy like the little um, buds of the lavender, the purple parts. You just have to make sure that it says it's culinary use, okay? The reason for that is that a lot of things are for body use, like for making a bath bomb or a lotion, and it may not be up to the standards or the safety regulations that something that is culinary grade or food grade is. So just be careful. So like if you get something from um, Nielsen Massey, that's going to be food grade. Um, and uh, there's lots of Middle Eastern less expensive um, rose waters that you can get that are great in, in culinary applications. I, have, I could either put some lavender buds in here and let it steep while I'm cooking it and then strain it, or I can be lazy and put a couple of drops of lavender extract. If you're not sure if you like floral flavors, A, I may have not met one of you before <laughs> because ever, either people are like, ooh, that sounds good, or ah, oh, that's horrible. Um, and, and Marilyn says orange and chocolate are her favorite combination. I know, it's like brilliant. It's this like perfect meld of flavors. I love it. It's got like lower notes and middle notes and top notes. Um, Jackie likes vanilla, cinnamon, and cayenne for her Mexican chocolate. And oh, how funny. Melissa says her girls are watching the Ms. Kathy show. That's awesome. Uh, hello, all you lovely ones. And I'm so glad. And maybe you can talk your mom into making you some cocoa later. Melissa may never talk to me again. But I am sure Melissa has a slow cooker somewhere. And um, she has... She actually batch cooks her stuff like crazy. But here's a special wave to you, to all the little kids out there who are ready for their hot chocolate, because that's how I feel on the inside today. Oh, look, thank you. Victoria did a little research for me. I love it when you guys help me out when I'm on the lives. I really appreciate it. And it's a Levantine unsweetened distilled spirit in the anise drinks family traditionally made from grapes and anise seed. Neat. I could see that. I could see that with some chocolate. That would be pr pretty good. Um, and hello to you, Facebook user whose name I do not know. You are probably calling from my group. But know that I, <laughs> I'm glad you are personally here. So let's say you don't have, you're not, you don't have Kathy's like cabinet of fancy 
extracts. Do you have an orange? And then what we can do, and here, let me see if I can um, do this overhead. Doo -doo -doo. There we go. I'll move the other hot chocolate out. You guys are going to hear all the rumblies. I'm, I'm never prepared for what I decide I'm going to do. Okay. So what we want to do, and yes, this is my famous Idaho potato um, peeler that is my favorite one because it's really sharp. So what we want to do is get as thin of the orange part of this skin of the orange without getting the white pith. And so I'm going to just do it real slow. And sometimes I just kind of inch it back and forth. I, inch, it seems like a big word. Millimeter it back and forth, maybe. And so I'll keep going. Then I'll show you the, it doesn't have to be perfect, but honestly, it's easier the less pith you have. So see, that's a good one. See, there's a little bit there, but it's so little. So what I would not want to do, let's see if I can grab a big piece so I can, yeah, there we go. So see how thick that is? So what that brings to the party is it will bring some bitterness. So the less we have of the bitterness, the happier our mouths will be. So what you can do, oh, it's Cheryl Bennett. Hey, Cheryl Bennett. I think you need some cocoa tonight. That's how I think you should roll. So, <laughs> wow, we're getting a lot more people. Oh, and Sophie's saying, have I tried an air fryer? Oh, yeah, and I'm thinking, actually, I have an air fryer class coming up, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Um, and you can, I know you're on a different time zone because you're in Sweden, but um, you can either come and watch the class live or you can watch the recordings of the classes. And I have a couple of air fryer classes that you can get right now, too. But yeah, we can, we can talk about that a little bit at the end. And orange and chocolate is a wonderful combo. Um, Jackie doesn't love peppermint, but creme de menthe isn't as overpowering. It's more like an Andy's mint. Yeah, and it's, a, it's about finding the right spot for you. So I feel very strongly about not telling you how many drops of lavender extract to use. In my recipes, I will tell you because I have to. But I would rather you learn and put a couple of drops in, mix it around, smell it, and go, hmm, I don't really smell it. Let me taste it. And you just taste it. I don't really taste it. Let's put a few more drops in and build it up like that. Because it takes some time the first time, but then you know how you like it. It's great if you want to drink it how I like it, but you know, I'm not there, so you're not doing me any favors. I want you to have this where you like it. So what we can do is we can, for this, oh. <sighs> that is a happy, if you guys have an orange, perhaps tonight, even if you don't make orange hot chocolate, you should do this just to smell it. It's so cheerful and bright and happy. And Sophie says she has to go to bed soon. Awesome. And Sophie, don't forget, you can always email me about things. And actually, any of you guys can at kathyhester at gmail.com. If you have a specific question, I'll try and get to you. Um, wherever you're watching, if it's on YouTube or Facebook, you can leave a questions there as well. And if I don't catch you in this, if you're watching in the replay, I will try and come back and look at those later too. So we're just we're going to drop this guy in. And so that's going to be mine. And then I can tell you. So that's one way you can do it. And if it's not enough orange for me, I will go ahead and put a couple of drops of the extract in. I want to do a little reveal. So this is one I did about an hour ago. I did not break up the blocks. Let me get into the part where it's actually focused or change the part where it's actually focused. There we go. And then you're just going to take a whisk because you can see there's some little chocolate bits. And with the other ones, I had actually broken it into piece, two pieces. So let me show you. The chocolate was like this. So the one you saw me make and pour in a little bit ago, I just broke it in half so it would go a little faster. The ones that are in here, I didn't even do that. But I did stir it right before we got on. It was probably at about 40 minutes. And see how it's melting a little bit? And you are going to see some of the oil sheen from the chocolate because 
chocolate has oil in it. You could also, if you don't have fancy chocolate, and here we go, but you just want to whisk it a little bit. That's all you need to do. And then it's ready for vegan marshmallows. Who has their dandies ready? Last year, I had peppermint dandies, and I need some of those. Um, so I wouldn't want to do that. I would do peppermint dandies with regular hot chocolate or peppermint hot chocolate, but I would not do it with orange hot chocolate. That would make me, that would make me sad. Um, I want to taste this. And if there's a couple of little pieces, so there's a couple of pieces, I'll let you see. This could go a little bit longer. It's, it's shy of the whole hour and a half. Can you see there's a few little, little bits of it? But honestly, that's also going to just melt in your mouth. And it's not gritty or anything like that, right? It's just really smooth. And it gives that extra poof of chocolate which is really, really delicious. In fact, well, no, I was like, I'm going to drink this, but I, this is Cheryl, so I have to save it because I'm a good person. Um, and Jackie loves dandies too. Um, so it only takes about an hour, an hour and a half on high. You could do it on low, and you can even keep it going for longer. So like, and actually, I will show you this. Let me get a... A scooper and you can see it could still use about maybe five or ten more minutes if you want it to look perfect but it for drinking it's still pretty good and it's pretty thin okay so if you left it cooking all day and you're using white sugar it's gonna thicken and thicken and thicken a little bit. You can also always add more sugar. I always go a little bit on the low side. So for three cups of unsweetened soy milk, I'm using about a third a cup of sugar. And again, if you are doing no sugar, if you're SOS free, you could use cocoa. It's not gonna give you exactly the smoothest as it will as if you're melting this chocolate, but you can use cocoa and hot milk and sugar and you can heat it in any way you want. So that's something else. Um, you might want to blend it really well, maybe before you put it in or after. If you don't have like little fancy chocolate tablets around um, and you've got chocolate chips, you too can make something like this. You're just not going to add any sugar and just put the chocolate chips. So if you're not doing any kind of sugar, you could use something like Lily's chocolate chips that are sweetened with stevia. Um, there is another, I don't remember the brand though, there's another one that is malt sweetened, I think. So there's a few different things that are happening like that, but in general, so if you're looking at chocolate chips too, you have to be really careful to make sure that they're vegan because they put milk fat in. Even, they do that even to some dark chocolates because it's cheaper. It's not any other reason but, but they're trying to save money because um, like a cocoa fat costs a lot more than a, a removed milk fat. But just keep reading on those directions. Also our ingredients and look for contains dairy. But a lot of Lily's products contain dairy. There are a few that don't. And so those can keep changing. Trader Joe's, I haven't seen their chocolate chips this year, but in past years, those have been vegan. There have been some years that Costco's were vegan, but it wasn't vegan last year. So that's something else to know. Ooh, Jackie, that sounds really good. So Jackie's saying she uses some English toffee stevia drops. And that's something else you could do, because like really, Cocoa is one thing, but it can mean so many different things and fit in so many different kinds of diets. Like this weekend, at some point, I'm planning, if I can find <laughs> my cocoa butter, um, I'm going to make uh, a homemade white hot chocolate for vegans. And it's really cool to see it come together. And I'm going to make also an atole, which is a corn cinnamon warm drink that's kind of... Um, popular in Latin America and it's it sounds weird because to Americans it's like a corn drink hmm 
but it's actually sweet and delicate and adds this beautiful flavor with the cinnamon. So I'm super excited to try those too. Uh, do you guys have any questions? So I'll recap the recipe. I have, um, I can't remember if I put a link to the recipe, but you can get it on healthyslowcooking.com. Just look up hot chocolate. Um, oh, great. Yeah, you could totally use monk fruit. And with monk fruit and stevia, especially, what's well, really stevia especially, you want to start very small because stevia goes from, I can't taste it, to, ah, it's too bitter really quickly. So like I was saying before, you want to do little by little by little. You could use monk fruit, fruit sweetener. Um, I think it could be very interesting to do a Mexican hot chocolate with brown sugar. Obviously, I think it's, is it? Oh, the name is escaping me, but it's, it's the brown sugar that's in like the little um, 3D triangle shape thing. It's, is it Picadillo? But anyhow, it's a kind of brown sugar. So there's our jaggery is the Indian version of it. So that would bring some extra flavor to it. And it would be interesting and different. So you can make this different every single day if you wanted to. Um, yeah, Atole is awesome. So Cheryl Bennett says it's awesome. And Marilyn hu husband loves cocoa with cinnamon toast. I kind of like the way he rolls. That sounds pretty cool. Um, and Regina says a white cocoa, what? A white chocolate cocoa, what? I know. And so I actually make like a homemade oat milk and we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it on the, on my nemesis, the induction burner. And we'll see how it turns out there. But it's really kind of cool because the oats, I make a homemade oat milk and then it pulls it together as we cook it. So it's really an interesting process and I think you guys will enjoy seeing that. Yes, Polancila. Silo? I am Silo. Thank you. And I know I'm butchering that and I apologize to all Spanish speaking people everywhere. But it would be delicious. And I know I have one in my, I think I have it in my pantry too. Um, so you could do that and you could put some cinnamon sticks in there and let the cinnamon infuse kind of like we did with our, um, why did I just forget that name? Um, with our syrup that has cinnamon in it. It's cinnamon dolce, our cinnamon dolce syrup that we made two days ago. So like Monday we made a gingerbread infused maple syrup to use as a coffee syrup. You could also use that as a sweetener if you wanted to. I think with the maple syrup, I would be reluctant to do it because the cost would make it so much higher. And I like to save those things for exactly what I want, which is gonna be my iced coffee. And I'm thinking about some baked apples too. That was some baked apples over, uh, over some baked apples would be great. On Tuesday, we made a cinnamon dolce syrup with brown sugar. Yesterday, we made um, cold foam and we looked at some of those things and we made a gingerbread latte, an iced gingerbread latte with cold foam. And we also found, spoiler if you haven't seen it, that the air container, AER container for the Vitamix does better than <laughs> the stick immersion blender little mini chopper, but the mini chopper worked. So if you don't have the other one, so try blending up some barista blend and topping some of these drinks. You could top this with some foam as well, and that would make it seem like extra, extra, extra decadent. Piloncio. Piloncio. So thank you, Cheryl. I always appreciate phonetically spelling things for me because once it's after three o'clock, my brain is a little softer than it is earlier in the day too. Okay, awesome. Do you guys have any questions? Um, <laughs> evidently, Max has a question. No, he doesn't. <laughs> um, I think someone is delivering something or coming home. I'm not sure which one. I apologize for Max being such a grumpy bottom. Um, let's look at, here, I'll, we'll look one more time at the chocolate. And know that if you're using sugar, real sugar, it will get thicker and thicker. And if you add more sugar, it will get even thicker. And you could cook this instead of the slow cooker, we could have put these same ingredients on our stove top in a pan 
and just whisk it. You're going to want to make sure to whisk it more often if it's on the stove because the chocolate on the bottom could burn. And you want to probably do it over a medium heat and then lower it to simmer. And honestly, if you're right there kind of near the kitchen, you could leave it on low and simmer until you're finished eating and ready to have it for dessert. And I think that's all I've got for you today. So A, have a good night. B, treat yourself to some cocoa that fits into your particular dietary need. So if you, if you wanna make this with carob and you wanna make it with hemp milk and stevia, I support you in that. If you want to make it exactly the way I want to do it. Oh, the one thing we did not talk about, the adult alternatives to go in the coffee. Um, there's a vegan Bailey's that's made with almond. That's awesome. I also have kind of a cream liqueur recipe that maybe we'll do before the month of December is over. And you could use, um, oh, what's the, what's the licorice liqueur? Is it Galliano, something like that. I don't usually drink it, but Grand Marnier is amazing. Cream de mints you could put in there. Honestly, you could put a nice spiced rum in there. And I'm talking about a little bit for a taste. This should not be like, let's have five cocos full of alcohol. But if you, I, sometimes a little apple brandy or just a little something kind of like a toddy. Turn your hot chocolate into kind of a chocolate toddy. And I think that would be kind of soothing sit in front of the fire, be glad it's December. And if you're living in North Carolina, like I am, I will just be pretending that it's snowing because it's a little warm today. Okay, so I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. I don't know at what time. I will put it up about an hour before I go live though, so you'll have a chance to see it. And we'll either do a tole or the white hot chocolate that's vegan. Bye.